Hey guys and dolls, this is Dougie Fresh. Today I'd like to explain a little bit of how I do my green screening processing of images. I've had quite a few people ask me this uh, in the last couple of months, but as you know, I'm moving or I've finished moving and I'm finally getting settled in, so now I've got a little bit more free time. Don't quite know what's going on with my microphone today. I've got a little static in the background. I'll figure that out later, but I thought I'd give it a go, at least a shot. Um, but this is great, my green screening process. Uh, I have an image of my friend Katie Reed, um, a little gymnast friend of mine, that I took uh, several months ago against a green screen. I believe the green screen was a uh, maybe a 10 by 20, I think. Uh, but what I'd like to point out here, and I'm in Photoshop right now, but what I'd like to point out, I'm not going to do any editing. The most important part of green screening, or at least shooting, is to make sure that you're you're evenly lit in the background. Uh, obviously, you want your, your, your subject to be lit the way you want them to be, but the background uh, has to be evenly lit for the, the program that we are going to be using to be able to pull all of this out and make it go away. Um, I didn't necessarily do the greatest job of that. You're going to see some shadows here at the crease. You're going to see some wrinkles. There is definitely some shadows here. Luckily, the program that I'm going to be using is very intu intuitive. It's got a, a pretty, pretty serious uh, processing system going on and, and it can see all of this and it's going to make it go away but we're going to give it a shot and make it happen um, but that's all that's I just wanted to just see the image because we're not going to be doing much editing in Photoshop the image is already processed the way I want it to be it's really kind of straight out of the camera uh, but now we're going to be going to a program called PhotoKey Pro uh, 5 uh, this is the program that I like to use uh, the initial screen that you're going to see when you come up you might see the home screen which looks like this and It'll tell you there are video tutorials, and it can you know read it and see what you're supposed to. Do. It can learn about the the software, uh, but the work working page or working piece of this is in the edit program. Um, very first thing on your left hand side you're going to see is Canvas, uh, and over here on the right hand side, while Canvas is is highlighted, you're going to have options of the size of your canvas, how, how big you want it to be. There's also a size for custom. Uh, for right now, I'm going to leave it at five by seven. The option also allows you below it to go horizontal or vertical and change your landscape, you know, to portrait or landscape, however you'd like to do it. You can change screen resolution. You can make all kinds of things happen, but I'm not going to worry about all that. We're just going to go right into the processing of it. Um, the green screen image itself is, is essentially the image that's going to be in the foreground. Um, the background image is going to be whatever I want it to be and you'll see how that process works in a second by going to the import tab over here and clicking import you'll see two tabs the foreground and the background Now the foreground tab I'll click on it and click import uh, it will take me to the images that I want to import I have a couple here um, I believe the one of Katie Reed is down at the bottom and that's the one we're going to use so you simply click open takes a couple of seconds and voila now obviously Katie Reed is extremely large here and we need to reduce her make her fit into our frame uh, this is the original green screen image but you see that the software has almost taken away everything that we we had anyway there's a little bit more to be done but we're gonna go ahead for the for the meantime and make this image smaller to do that again keeping on the foreground tab go to position I like to use the scale and scale it down just by sliding it and we're going to slide it to about right there and it'll screen up all right now that's what the foreground image is going to look like now you you can already see that there is some green here or along the edge it's caught it's taken out almost everything there are a few little minor details and we can clean that up in just a second um, by going to key now we have we don't have the background in it but we're going to clean this up a little bit if you go to key you're going to see all of these crazy options and they're probably going to scare you. Uh, don't let them, I, you know, you can go in there and click and play and do all kinds of things. But basically, we're adjusting the green in and around the image to get it out of there. We want it out of there so it doesn't, it doesn't make our image look bad. The way I would do that, the way I do it, at least, is to go into Spill Settings. Uh, actually, Spill Suppression. And there are all kinds of methods, but... If you go in, click down into Extended. Now watch what happens around this leg area when I click Extended. See, it's gone. It just disappeared. 
there are other ways to to subtract and add and erode and do all kinds of things to get the tougher green out of there. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I'm going to leave it as is for now uh, because I will be doing a bit of a, an HDR out of this or a bit of a, uh, a grunge look anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, but the, the foreground image is set. It's kind of where I want it. Um, it can be moved around. And remember now, if you go to import again and you're on that foreground, the image itself... No, I'm sorry. I'm clicking on the wrong thing. I need to click on foreground and position. And the image itself can be moved around within the frame. Uh, but just that's just FYI more than anything. We're going to leave it there. It will snap to, and again, the scale is adjusted here, the size of it, but it has to be on the position tab. But we're going to go back and we're going to work on our background. We're going to import a background. We're going to go to import background, import, and we have to click on the background tab. Um, I click on import, and it's going to bring up my folder of backgrounds. Now, I've got a lot, um, and you can get anything you like. These are just some ones that I pulled out very, very quickly. Um, I'm going to do this little hallway thing here. I think I've, I think I've done a very similar image like this before. Uh, but we're going to click that. And it's going to import the background. In just a second here. Boom. Uh, it looks very awkward, very not real. And remember, the size has to be adjusted. It's not the correct scale. This is what it looks like in real life. And it's obviously a lot bigger than the 5 by 7 that I set up. So we're going to go to uh, position again. Uh, make sure that it's on the background tab and we're going to go back to scale and we're going to slide the scale down Okay, to about right there alright so far so good and, and remember that in position it can be still be moved around as long as it's on the background tab or the foreground tab you can move these around to fit you can do whatever you like to make it work uh, I'm going to put it just like this snap it too that's as simple as it gets it still doesn't really look real though. It doesn't look like it, it's, it looks like it was her feet were placed in there. This is where I like to go in and, and adjust. I think it's important to adjust your shot to blend it together and make it look real. Obviously this is kind of a grunge shot and I took this pretty little young lady and stuck her in this ghetto like hallway. Um, but I'm going to make it look a lot better than it does just within photo key itself by a few simple clicks. It's really really simple to do. We're going to go now to the effects tab. Um, effects brings up this menu over here. There are some 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 that I like to kind of stick with. Uh, first and foremost, bleach bypass is one of my favorites. You already see what it has done to the image. It, uh, for me, at least right now, and you don't have to do bleach bypass on every shot. You can do all kinds of them. Um, and then I'm going to go into uh, vignette and it'll create a little vignette around it. Um, if you don't like any of these at any point, you can click out of them by just hitting the check mark and it'll bring you back to your, origi uh, rips, whoops, uh, whoops, your original image. Um, but what I'd like to do is, is go into focus blur. I want to blur out the background just a little bit. Just a little bit. Even before I do the things that you just saw, I'm going to redo those, but we're going to go into focus blur And right now, oops, am I on focus blur? I'm on the wrong one. Of course I am. It can't be easy now, can it? We have to go to filters. I apologize. We're going to go to filters. Now, we have a background and a foreground tab. Remember, the only thing I'm trying to do right now is kind of blur out the background. So I'm going to go to background. You can adjust anything in the background, the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, all for the background. I'm just going to add a simple blur by clicking this tab and giving it just a little nudge to the right, just a little bit. Now see, now I've got some blur going on. A little, almost a little bulk. It might be a little too much. I'm going to bring it up to maybe four. There we go. Just a little bit of a blur. Now, Remembering the entire time that I've got to still make this image blend in, I'm going to go now back to effects. I am going to go ahead and add that same bleach bypass. All right, and you can adjust any of this. You can adjust anything in here. Saturation, contrast, strength, if you wanted to loosen it up a little bit so it wasn't quite so, so tough like that and then I'm gonna add the vignette 
just around the edges of the image, just like that to blend it in. And that really is about all I'm going to do in the image right now. All right. I realize it made her a little hot. You can adjust that later and you can go in to any of these and adjust it accordingly. But it made her a little, her skin tones are a little hot. Um, but again, keep in mind, I've, I've made it purposely a bleach bypass, bleach bypass, which is going to, you know, lighten her a little bit. Uh, once I'm done processing the image and I've gone through all of these and I've gone it over here and I'm done with it, I'm going to go into, and you have, this is where it gets a little weird because I've never understood this, but you have to go into batch export. Uh, it automatically uh, saves as a PNG unless you change it at batch export, which I've never understood. But I'm simply going to make it a, J make it a JPEG. Um, obviously the TIFF would probably be the better choice, but I'm going to make it a JPEG for now. Uh, you can change compressions, you can change all of this stuff. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to go, and you can do it off file, save as, or you can just click this little area here and hit export. It'll come up and it'll ask you where you want it. Uh, for right now, I will just put it into my same image folder that I had and hit save. Now it's doing the save. It'll tell me that it's done in just a few minutes. Click OK. Now I'm going to go back to Photoshop. In Photoshop, I have my original image, and you don't have to do this. This is just me. I'm going to go back and I'm going to open up the image I just processed. All right. And just so that you can see exactly what these images look like against each other, I'll reduce this one just a little bit and reduce this one. But side by side, this is what I've done with the, the image. I, I, you know, you don't have to do the bleach bypass. You can, I, you can use American flags. You can use all kinds, whatever. You can buy digital backdrops. Uh, for me, though, that's really, really kind of a cool look. And the image can still be adjusted in Photoshop in any way you want. Now that you've gotten this, you can go and you can adjust anything uh, just like you normally would. It's not layered. It's a flat image at this point. And you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. That is my method for green screening, and uh, there are a lot more tips and, and, and things that I can add and show you, or if you're not interested at all, you know, don't ask, but I'll be glad to help you if I can. Uh, but PhotoKey 5 or PhotoKey Pro 5 is probably the better software that I've seen. Uh, that combined with Photoshop or Lightroom, if Lightroom is your preference, are the, sh are the softwares of choice for doing this. I think it can come up with some really, really creative images. Um, and very, very simple and in easy way. It took me maybe about five or so minutes to do this, so it's not hard to do. I think if you really set your mind to it, you can probably come up with some really, really neat stuff. But you see how it pulled out all of the green. Um, and actually, the way the software works, it makes it look legitimately like she's standing right there in this spot. Um, it got rid of the cracks and the creases in the, in the, in the green screen. So... With that being said, I've run my mouth enough. I have a wedding that I have to go shoot now, so I'm going to get ready for that. But this is my very quick and easy method for green screening and green screening processing. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you'd like to get together and shoot and hang out, let me know that too. I'd love to do it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So for right now, let me get to my snag.